How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. Uh, I got some mail, update on the scribes, the dovetail cutters, and we're gonna go over and fix the collet closer. At least I hope we're gonna fix it on the hardage. Stick around. How you guys doing? Uh, Randy Richard in the shop. I think I've already said that, but uh, we're gonna look at some mail here real quick and uh, give you an update on scribes and dovetail cutters. And uh, then we'll go uh, fix, hopefully uh, tear down and fix the collet closer on the Hardage lathe. I was having some troubles with that. Uh, and uh, it wasn't opening all the way and sticking. It was in a very intermittent. And then as time went on here, Using it a lot, it got worse and worse. So I took it apart, figured out what was wrong, put it back together, got some parts, and now we're going to take it apart again and see if we can fix it. So uh, let's uh, take a look at the mail. Uh, one of the viewers, um, friend there, Mike Nixon, uh, sent me some uh, drops and uh, some Adel, looks like Delrin. So a uh, nice one there. That's a big one, about six inches, five inches. Uh, uh, so I love the orange stuff. That's pretty cool. Thanks, Mike. But he also sent a really nice big machina square. That's a more and right. It's the actually it's the only more and right tooling I have in the shop. So it's uh, you know it's 12 inches. Very very nice. Very it's perfect condition. Uh, literally brand new type condition. Edges are perfectly sharp and it's not a ding in it. Very, very nice. Thank you, Mike, uh, for uh, sending that along to the shop. And uh, I sent Mike a nice brass hex square. Uh, that's in the mail, Mike. It's uh, shipping today. So uh, thanks again, uh, Mike, uh, for doing that, sending that on. So, uh, scribe update. Yeah, and uh, dovetail cutters. So yeah, this is all the stuff I make right here. We have a brass round, copper round, stainless round, stainless hex, stainless, or brass hex. Right there, these are the ones I'm making. Uh, I made limited numbers of the stainless round, well, limited numbers of all of them, but, uh, uh, and the copper round. Uh, actually, there's only a few left. Uh, oh, 20 something probably of these. And another 10 or 12 of the copper ones. And uh, and I and same with the, the brass round, there's a uh, 20 something of those left. So uh, I made a lot of the hex ones, mostly all hex ones this year. Uh, those are seems to be more popular, so that's what I made. Uh, I haven't finished making them all even yet, uh, actually, but I have enough to, I've fulfilled a lot of orders. Actually, I've caught up on all my orders and um, continue to restock now with things. So we're, we'll continue that process. Uh, you know, it'll probably take me two years to sell all these things. <laughs> but anyway, they came out really nice. Uh, I'm mostly doing just a, I'm just doing a polish this year on everything. No grooves or or uh, knurling or anything like that. I'm just doing uh, high polishes on the ends and uh, uh, you know semi polish on the sides. And it's not otherwise the if you really polish the sides, the engraving doesn't show up very well. So we'll zoom in a little bit. So there you go. Uh, well, let's see here. If I move them too much, you can't see them. Nicely polished. Uh, so the end unscrews and screws back in again. That's how you use it. Or you could just use it by the handle too. I mean, you could just you could just hold it by this. But that's how they work. 
So I've had questions like, how long are they? Well, they are three inches, roughly three inches long, a little over, in total length. I, uh, these are three eighths round ODs on these. They come engraved with the, my logo RR in the shop, serial number, and I have three flats left, like on these, or whatever room I have on a on a round one. Uh, I'll engrave whatever you want on there. Uh, no charge uh, for the engraving, you know, the custom engraving. If I can get it on there, I'll I'll do my best to get it on there. Type of thing. Uh, let's see. So here's the copper one. Uh, this one has a serial number already. This is number ten. Like I said, uh, people have ordered these up pretty quick on some of them, so they disappeared already. <laughs> uh, so uh, if you want one, email me, rrintheshop at gmail.com. Email me. That's the way out. I, it's the way I do it all. It's just everything's by email. It's It just works for me real well. And uh, I'll send you the details about shipping and all that also my dovetail cutters I have a few in stock now I finally was able to catch up and get some extra ones made this is the larger one this 5 8 shank 1.23 roughly is the head diameter great for making tool holders that's what most everybody's making with these tool holders and a few other things but uh, they're great for tool holders uh, this is a three, 321 insert. And then the smaller one I make is a half inch shank one. You can also make uh, tool holders. Oops. You can also make uh, tool holders with this. Uh, AXAs. For sh I know you can make an AXA with one. The larger ones might be a little difficult because of the size of the insert. But this is a half inch shank. This head is 0 .940 approximately. That's the diameter of the material here, as a, the size here, that the insert sticks out a little bit, so it's a little bit bigger, right? Oh, there we go. Push those ugly scribes out of the way. So that's uh, the dovetail cutters. Uh, if you want a custom engraved, uh, it, it has my logo on the end. The serial number will be on here, and what insert is on here is engraved. And then there's room if you want your name or initials, or it has to be sh short. Uh, I can only use about an inch or so of the shank to do the engraving, but because of hold, holding it. But uh, no charge on engraving. So anyway, there's the and and I have a ex, ex, ooh, and uh, extra inserts I uh, have available with. And I sell the insert with a screw even. Uh, so for eight bucks if you want an extra insert. So th there's all this stuff. And like I said, email me and I will return with information about all of them uh, with the email. And uh, I think they came out really nice. I mean, I know the, the round ones, people say they roll off of things, uh, but you know, I'm, I made them so that you can put them in your pocket. That's the nice thing about them. They're, they'll go in your pocket, you can just slip them in your pocket, in your pants. Uh, you, you have something sharp with you. The, uh, this portion here is solid carbide. I didn't tell you that. Uh, it goes clear up here in the handle, so you got three inches of uh, carbide there. You can resharpen it. Uh, if you break the tip off, uh, it's Loctited in. If you just warm this up a little bit, you can just remove it and or pull it out or resharpen it or whatever you want to do there. Uh, but it's solid carbide. And uh, some people have actually used them, uh, put this, chucked it up in the mill or your drill press and used it as a pointer. Uh, it, it's pretty darn accurate. So... Let's see, what else? That's about it. So, everybody who does metal work ought to have a scribe. You might not all need a dovetail cutter, but you ought to have a scribe. Nicest one out there. At least that's what I feel. All right, you guys.
Thanks a lot. Let's uh, go fix something. <laughs> Here's a call it closer uh, out of the Hardinge. And uh, we're going to take it apart. Uh, inside here are three dogs that open and close that that cam and pull on the, or push, I should say, on the on the tube here. This uh, call it. So this is the this is mounted on the spindle right here. This nut and the collet is kind of snaps in there because it's expanded right now, right? And it, it presses up against the back of this this uh, spindle nut, pushes up for it to close. It it pushes up there, pushes up tight there against the the nut, and then this adapter, which is screwed in here to the tube. This is in the spindle, is on here, and that pushes against this taper, and it closes the collet. It's like that. It's in there, and it pushes against that. A uh, really nice feature about this type of collet is uh, it doesn't change the position of your workpiece when it, as it closes. It just closes down and that's it. 5C collets will have a tendency to pull back your work, especially if the diameter is changing. Even if it's just a thousandth or two and change in diameter, it will change the, pos the axial position of your part. Uh, unless they're all exactly the same. You know, here it can change in various, uh, your diameter could change a few thousandths and all it does is close straight down on it and it won't push the part in and out. Uh, uh, you minimize that type of thing with this type of collet. I won't say it won't do it, but it, it shouldn't do it and the, the way this uh, works. It, it's a little more accurate uh, collet closing system. Uh, so your brown and sharp screw machines uh, use this type of collets. Different, there's a bunch of different sizes of these. This is a, a type 21. Or style 21 call it so that goes in there and that's it now this thread is actually the same thread as a 5c call it right here that screws in here this adapter anyway so that's on there this this so this is the back this is this part is in the back end of the lathe this is your operating handle and as you when you pull on this one it pushes over and closes your collet and you push it away from you uh, opens it so we'll uh, we'll take take it apart the rest of the way here all right well see if I can remember uh, how I took it apart before This is uh, the, this ring is what you grab to adjust the collet. How much it how much it closes, and uh, it has a little set screw that goes in this uh, groove that's here to stop it from turning, and it takes a either a, a you know fa a face pin spanner. You know so you could either use something like this on there. To turn if it's really tight, which it shouldn't be, um, a, a wrench like this with uh, two pins in it. Now uh, Don Don Cossett made that wrench uh, for this, so uh, or, or there, or you this wrench also fits the same pattern as on the nut for the spindle.
There we go. Yeah, that all came apart. Yeah, it comes all apart once. So that that that's where the bearing is. Uh, that's right there. Now this is the taper where the dogs work against. Right in here. Anyway, this this is the 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 dog type clutch uh, where this latches into right here. Now this didn't work. Uh, this was kind of sticky before, and I, I took it apart. Uh, I knocked the pins out, and cleaned it up, and and I uh, got this working a lot better. It, it wouldn't stay in position. Uh, wouldn't stay locked in. It's like the spring wasn't working right. And I already took those screws out. Those screws hold the inner pieces in that holds the dogs and uh, yeah I have to take this out to get to this that's a pin that has to be punched out so there's a pin and in here I don't think it really mattered what way I tapped it, but actually it came out pretty pretty easily last time. But there's a spring, so like anything with a pin and a spring. Now that that's in there. There we go. This, this slides out. There we go. There's those three dogs. Now they just flop around, and now this one, see, this one sticks They're right there. That one's stuck right now. The rest of the other two, they should work like that, nice and easy. So this is, now I'll knock this pin out and you're going to see what's wrong. So let's see here. We're going we're gonna to change them all, but anyway, there's a quarter inch pin in here. It, it's actually a hardened dowel pin that goes through here. Uh, right here. Right here is the spring uh, that holds that detent for that little lever. And it will probably fall out on me. It's right here. All right. Uh, let's, uh, Feels like there's a, some burr there, but it should rotate fairly easily. We'll uh, stone those or something. Anyway, here's the pin. And it's just a dowel pin. But right in the middle here, right there, I don't know if you see those lines. I don't know if you can see the differences, but right here, those lines. It's a considerable wear. I mean, very noticeable. You can feel it quite easily. Other than you can see it. Uh, you know, it could be ten thousands even. It's uh, worn quite a bit. So what happens is, it, in the wrong over here, it's not worn on this side. So it gets in the wrong position and it gets bound up if the pin moves or on there. I mean, these, these fit real nice on that, on the new part where it's not worn. But when you get down here, it's as sloppy as can be. So it gets bound up. So, I got some uh, brand new dowel pins. You know, I, I, <laughs> I had a hell of a time trying to buy a couple, so I just bought a whole box. It was, it was, real, it was really cheap if you bought a whole box of them. And they're uh, just the inch and a quarter by quarter dowel pins. 
and they should uh, just fit just nice yep that'll be just fine I should go through and maybe pick out some that so they're all the same size see that one fits actually a little looser so I'm gonna go through and see if I can find the smaller ones to make it so it fits uh, fits nice Uh, I went through a whole pile of these uh, pins and you know they're within a one-tenth of one another uh, some will vary from 2.500 to uh, to 1 to 2.501 or and some are uh, twos and threes so I found some of the smaller ones that vary around uh, you know one-tenth to two-tenths at the very most yeah, the, but these are all real free spinning ones compared to some of the others that are that they're not quite as free spinning. That was a, that was a good one too. Uh, but uh, so I just went through and found a bunch of nice free spinning ones. Uh, that's what I want. So I will knock the rusty pins out here. They're not in there super tight. I mean, they're tight, but I can just sit here and pound them out. See, that little spring detent just fell out. Yeah, they're all, all worn. That's one of the worn ones, you know. And it doesn't, they're all the same. It doesn't matter where they go. And, and these are in good shape. They, they show a little wear, but I mean, hardly any. So these are probably pretty hard. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hone I'm gonna get any beers that are on there to clean them up. Anyway, these all have uh, grooves worn in them. Every one of them. Yep. So they they're they're time to be replaced. Uh, yeah, nice, nice and smooth. So, that one, hmm, a little dirt and crud in there or something. We'll have to clean that one out. Yeah, that one's got some something in it, but that wasn't the one that was sticking. Well, I'll clean all those out, and uh, we'll hone some of those edges off. I'm just taking a, a stone. This is actually a, one of those translucent hard Arkansas. It's a little bit dirty, but I, I cleaned it. But I've had this a long time. Anyway, we're just going to go in here. And see if there's any burrs on the sides and any crud that's built up. Yeah, 
Yeah, you can see where there's some burr, especially around those corners. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go around with it, this and uh, clean them up, and we'll get it so it works out. I'll maybe take a little uh, paper in there, even get the dirt out. All right, I've got these two in here. Now, one went in good. They all fit the slots fine. You know, you could put, you could feel it, you know, they were fine in each slot. But when I went to put the pins in, they weren't fine. So I found one that went in with a new pin and it was nice and free and just fine. Then the other two were tight. You put the pin in, and it was their binding and what happened was th this material is soft uh, material or softer I should say than these dogs here these are fairly hard uh, I stoned the sides and and there's no burrs or anything and I cleaned the holes with reamers uh, but they were binding in the slots and when you look because of the play on the pins these were able to move side to side a bit and they wore and so what was happening is now with the new pin they were back to being quote unquote straight and that wear made them crooked in the slot actually so i dressed the sides of the slots these uh, two slots with a file and cleaned them up um, and now you know they still fit here now, there's a tiny bit of a movement there but with the new pin there's basically no movement so we're gonna throw this uh, this one in with a new pin And now it's it's still free, and once we get it in there, it should still be free. And it's got to clear the curvature of this ring, and now it's still free. So we have all three that are nice and free now. We'll put a little oil on them and uh, they should work and they shouldn't cock and get bound up anymore go down a little bit more yeah that looks good so that's a lot better and they they don't wobble because of the way they fit on those pins really well And then we have to uh, put our latch back in. This little uh, plunger goes down that hole. farther farther down that
and uh, fits 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 down in that hole. There's a hole down in here, and it fits in it. And then a, the pin goes through here, holding the latch in. All right, we lubed up these, and we're ready to put this. Start putting this the rest of the way together. Now these, this drops in here, and you have to line up the groove with that groove for the little latch. And then you put it in, you put that pin in um, afterwards. You gotta drive it through these holes here. There we go. That goes into a, a stop shoulder. And then we'll line up that. We'll get something down there to get that rotated right. There we go. So that's lined up. Okay, we got punches in there holding it all in, and uh, it's. Uh, we're just going to try to drive that through and uh, see if we can capture it. Uh, it sure is tight though. Yeah, it's not too bad. It, he's it's just a alignment, you know. Not that way. It's a little too tight now. There we go. Well, that works. I think it needs to go a little tiny bit more. That'll work. Alright, we have uh, the pin in for the latching mechanism. Extremely frustrating to put in. And I have the screws that hold this piece in here all in that goes in there and that should latch into any notch you set it at and that works fine. and all of our uh, dogs are free to move nice and free there's a there's a key here then slip it on. Then the key falls. There we go. <laughs> One of those things you have to put in the right order, I guess. And, uh, yeah, these are the little feet to go grab onto the bearing here. And a little spring washer. I uh, put new ones of those in there last time. go and uh you gotta get 
this on there. We'll line that up with that little groove. Put the snap ring back on. Here we go. Just getting everything set back up here. Now these go in those little notches in the bearing there that somebody ground in. Tap this back out against the snap ring. Good enough. Tighten that up. And, uh, okay. Basically, back, back together, ready to go on the, ready to go on the lathe. Uh huh. Boy, that was a ordeal. <laughs> and then uh, we'll give it a try and uh, make sure she doesn't uh, want to stick anymore. It shouldn't now. It should work, work really well. So thank you guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. And uh, we'll be doing, of course, more of this type of work. Uh, I think I've taken apart every collet closer I have now, except the closing one, I think. So, uh, becoming an expert on collet closers. <laughs> and uh, we'll get this back in service. So, thank you guys for watching. And uh, like I said, please subscribe. And I have scribes ready. Order up. Order a scribe. Or a dovetail cutter. I have everything in stock now. All right. That's uh, the hard H, and uh, this is the spindle nose right here. And this is the back end of the spindle right here. Now this is a threaded piece here that the collet closer threads onto. It's keyed to the spindle and it has to slide. Uh, it has to have some movement here. And if it, if it, this one was really sticky and uh, you know cleaning the, just cleaning everything up, uh, we got it to slide real well. So, the closer we just repaired slips in here. This lathe has a nice feature right here, and this is a spindle lock. So I have it in position here, uh, and I'll push it in. And it, it it opens a limit switch inside and disables uh, the run mode, of course, the run controls of the lathe when you push it in. And you can has a set screw to lock it down if you want. We don't need to for right now. I have no power to the machine right now. So you can, you can push it in to hold it though. So we're going to thread this on. And threads on all the way up to the shoulder. Just like that. Uh, there are, there are uh, a couple of uh, holes here. They that are threaded you can put a set screw I think into 
so you can lock it but I have found no need to lock it to the threads it just buggers them up but anyway so that uh, goes there there's a couple holes for a spanner wrench so you can just snug it on there now this spins nice and free and this is our our lock uh, to lock it in tightening position of how tight we're going to have it in that dog on the inside and this is the pivot we'll spin that around and a couple pivot pins here that you just screw up in there and get adjusted I don't want them too tight. You want to have, to have you know free ease of movement there. And then that's the op that's going to be the operation of the of the clothes from in and out. On this end, we'll slip in the adapter, and we're going to thread. Now this this is a very close tolerant fit, so it's got to be. Clean and just right. Like I said, it's really, really close to all the right there. <laughs> well, and there's a key, I should say, and the key. So you got to get the key. There. There it goes. That goes in and then thread it in to the tube. Now, how much you thread it in, this is how you adjust the pressure on your collet. Then we're going to slip a collet in. It just slips in, just boom, just like that. Now you can just, or you can snap it in here and put it in. Now this just, just you don't have to have this super tight. This just, just hand, hand knocked with the wrench. That's all it needs to be. Now we're ready to go on to set it. So here, this is a quarter quarter inch collet, and we have our one of our parts here that will need to deal still needs to be finished for the scribe. Right here, this part, this bend's been machined and threaded, and the hole's been drilled, and still need to be machined on this end. That slips in there. Now these collets open up a lot farther than a 5C collet, so. It gives you a little bit more uh, room uh, for uh, tolerance wise as far as you know uh, being out of tolerance uh, to, to grab something actually. Now we're going to adjust this tighter until we can get it until it closes up. There we go. That's it. It's a very st short stroke, uh, about three eighths of an inch or so. That's all it is. You can see there, it's, uh, that's how it gets in. Very, very short stroke. So it's pretty, pretty easy to operate. There's a part, lock it in. Now this part does not move when you, when in or out. Uh, when you grip, when you put it in there, that's where it is. It's in that location, which is. Uh, really a nice feature. It makes for very accurate parts that way. Uh, once you have it in the position you want, you find the closest notch. There we go. Lock your a little tab in. Unlock the spindle so it can turn. And uh, basically you're ready to go. There we go. Forward and reverse. This bearing is a little, uh, I probably should replace it, it's a little noisy, and uh, I could, I should probably replace it, I'll get the numbers off of it.
where you can you can lock stuff and unlock stuff while it's running. Uh, the collet turns, but your part is, is very loose, uh, so it's pretty easy to put a part in, do your machining, and take it out. Boy, that, that's unlocking every time now. That's, <laughs> that's nice. One nice thing about this collet closer, about being able to undo and grab your part out. Uh, basically, there's no friction on it. 5 C's still hold the part. Uh, if it's a round part, fine to grab, uh, but you'll scratch up your parts a lot of times with a 5 C. Here, here you can, it's so loose that uh, you can freely take things in and out without scratching them up. That's fast, there's slow speed. So you don't have to turn your machine off so much. Just keep it running. Put your parts in, do your work. That's uh, another advantage of this collet. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, yeah, especially if you want to see more of this stuff. Buy a scribe, support the channel, and uh, we'll keep things rolling. Thank you. Thank you very much.